But deliver us but deliver from us. evil. But deliver us but deliver from us. evil. But deliver us but deliver from us. evil. Powerful prayer in the face of violence. A Decatur neighborhood bands together in the wake of a senseless murder. Good evening, everyone. A 15-year-old girl shot dead. A 15-year-old boy behind bars. Tonight, a neighborhood praying for all those involved. ABC News Channel 20's Kimberly Howard has tonight's top story. Flowers and stuffed teddy bears, little comfort to a neighborhood shattered by gunfire again. This makeshift memorial just yards away from another memorial just down the street. The people here hoping they don't have to build another. The fire we stand, the fire we fall. Neighbors who just last week were too frightened to speak now have a lot to say. We're calling on the east side. Yeah. We're calling on the west side. Yeah. We're calling on the south side. Yeah. We're calling on the north side to come together and take a stand. Yeah. Of course, there's one voice that can't join in on their pleas to stop the violence. As soon as I heard screaming, that's how I know some bad tragedy ha happened. 15 year old Janisha Cummings. She, uh, we're, we're really trying to get out of the area, trying to go to the store, cross the street or whatever, and um, a straight bullet hit her. That's when, I mean, I ran, everybody, the whole neighborhood came. The cheerleader, basketball player, follower of God, lay lifeless in the streets. Our Father, Our Father. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come. Decatur police arrested a 15-year-old boy for her murder. This group praying for him as well. Somebody needs to be bold enough to step out and say you're my brother. And that's somewhere there's help. Ceasefire closed up, ceasefire closed, they closed all the after school programs. There is nothing for these young people to do. Except hold hands and pray for a better tomorrow. We just want to celebrate, you know what I'm saying, the fact that God has her now. She's in a better place. And um, Jamisha, we love you. We, we're going to miss you forever. I really, I'm really going to miss her. <laughs> You'll miss her. Items you'd likely see tucked under a Christmas tree, tossed to the curb instead. The skeletons of former homes still able to stand exposed to the cold as memories are whisked away in the wind. Everything, the pictures and well, just everything that's a gathering life, you know, it's gone. Somewhere inside this flattened neighborhood, now crawling with contractors, is Richard Blaine's antique model car collection. It's miles from this hotel, where Blaine and his wife have spent the last month. His truck is demolished. The couple insists it's all just stuff. The most important thing is, by the grace of God, and my family is fine, and my animals are fine. They survive for a week by themselves. But frightening memories survive too, like when Blaine's home collapsed around him. I mean, your furniture's flying all over. The whole side of the building came off. But it was the howling wind, Blaine says, he never wants to hear again. It's a sound that shouldn't exist. A sound that's been replaced by machines grinding towards some sort of normalcy. At one point, they were running basically three days, I think, nonstop. Police say after just a few days, everyone who could have power had it. And after just one week, all of the city's gas lines were replaced. Unfortunately, that type of quick progress has stalled. With the snow and the ice up there, it makes it a little more treacherous. You gotta be, takes a lot, takes a little bit longer to do everything. You gotta, you know, take a lot of precautions. And even though people are pledging to return, there's no telling when this community can really ever heal. Well, firefighting is rich in tradition and history. Whenever one of the fallen go down, the family of firefighters is always going to try and be there. And here they are, hundreds of them from departments across the state, including the place firefighter Sean Slow started his journey. Great guy, great paramedic. Uh, he's one of those guys that you could always count on. You know, if you needed something, you could pick up the phone and he was always going to be there. Until a tragedy in Springfield made that impossible. Scores of people now line the streets to say goodbye to a man they call a hero. Show my respects. Uh, pay my respects to the family, the Chicago Fire Department, and other firefighters throughout the country. A Chicago fire truck leads the way, draped in purple, a symbol of mourning, as the procession romps through Slow's final resting place. It's just like for... A fallen soldier, uh, the country honors the fallen soldier. Uh, the community should honor a fallen firefighter, police officer, or EMS person. 
faint sound of a bell echoes through the trees. In the early days, the bell was rang when there was a fire and the bell was rang when the call was over and, and the firefighters returned home. And that, these firefighters say, is exactly what's happened. The ultimate call completed. Their hero, now home. The town really rallies around the athletics and the kids and the families and everybody pulls together. If ever there was a time when a town needed football, it's now. It's been very surreal. One week after a massive twister carved a path through Washington, Illinois, togetherness. Yes! Pride. Washington! Washington! Cheers. It definitely gave us something to look forward to. So at the end of the week, we all knew that we could get away for maybe one day and just come here and cheer on the team. The Panthers clawed their way to a 12-0 record just one day before many of them lost their homes. People have been sending us pictures like from other schools, like all wearing orange on Friday. On game day, it's all orange too. The stands packed, the fans ready, the Cyclones no longer something to fear. We're really appreciative of everyone that's come and help. Sacred Heart Griffin carted truckloads of food and water to the devastated town. They raised more than $50,000 to help them rebuild. They even fed the team on game day and bust in their opponent's fans. So it's football on the field, elation on the sidelines. Definitely a nice escape and it's definitely well needed. As the players go head to head for a shot at the state finals, somehow the score doesn't matter because being united like this is victorious. I mean, we're all proud of them and then I mean, win or lose, they've been through a lot, so. In Springfield, Kimberly Howard, ABC News Channel 20.